feel like I say this probably every year, but I think this winter has maybe been the worst in terms of conditions that we've ever had. There's just been so few dry days, and even the dry days, it hasn't been that good. It's been quite warm. Over here in Deepcast Stocksbridge, where Warncliff is, quite often has like a totally different climate to in the Peak District. So recently there's actually been quite a few nice days here where it's been dry and sunny and we've managed to get some good climbing done. I think they're made by iron deposits in the rock, so they're, they're harder. And then whenever the rock is eroded, everything else will erode faster than these strips of, of iron or harder, harder rock. So you get these like snakes, to put it scientifically. I first came across Warren Cliff when I saw a video of Ned Fihali climbing Kobe and it just looked like something which was unlike anything I'd seen in the UK really, like really crazy rock, it's sandstone, but it had features like granite, you know, there's like edges and it was quite steep and kind of like a board style climb. Come on. Come on. I first came here to try that and when I came just realised that that was just the surface and actually there's so much other climbing to be done across all the grades. The crag's kind of tiered and there's sort of various paths. You've got like a road beneath it, path in the middle and a path on the top and there's sort of boulders scattered all across the hillside up and down. We found it super useful using the live location on the RockFacts app because all the boulders have been pinpointed on there so you can see your location and just kind of beeline towards the climb you want to try. Should we go do that new one, Porcini Roof? Oh, John's. Yeah. Double toe hooks, I think. It's just been put on the app as well. Damn. All these holes under the roof are condensed. Oh. Looks cool though. One for another time. A lot of the crag is in the woods. It can stay quite dank, so if it's been wet or if it's, if it's been raining, you know, there's a lot of moisture in sort of the undergrowth. So some of the boulders can stay quite damp, and because the rock is sandstone, it can be quite fragile, so it's best to just kind of walk away and leave it for a drier day. Over Christmas, I came maybe four or five times. Even just walking along the base of the crag, you see sort of lots of quite obvious gaps. So for me, it was quite similar to Wyomingbrook a couple of years ago. It almost felt like a, a venue where there were still lots of obvious unclimbed lines. So it was really exciting. This is a new one I did on Boxing Day called Prickly Elbow. It's kind of like just techie wall climbing. It's not super physical, just like quite balancey. I thought it was maybe 7B, but today it felt quite a bit harder. Sandbagged by your younger self. Yeah, only two months ago. <laughs> When I was coming here quite a bit, I was mainly focused on trying to do some new climbs. One of my favourites was Tawny Hawk. You kind of pull on this like beautiful seam of really smooth, nice crimps. They're not sharp, they're just like perfectly rounded. It's kind of like the Beastmaker 15 mil edge or something. But then after there, they just get progressively sharper and more horrible. So it kind of loses its touch after that a bit. But I think that was one of my favourite ones I did here. It's quite like independent line. It's kind of just a bit of a test piece of crimping, really. Oh, 
Over the years, the Crags see various people working on it in terms of development, but the main person has been John Ford. He's done tons of first sense here, and of the ones which aren't his, he's probably played quite a big part in either finding, cleaning, you know, their just general development. So he's got a lot to, a lot to thank for, for sure. Since the first time I came here, compared to now, the crag's already getting like a lot more attention. While that's great because it kind of takes away some of the strain on a lot of the more popular crags, it's really important that we just remember to leave the crag as we found it, you know, taking litter away, trying to brush as much chalk off as you can and tick marks and stuff and just leaving it kind of as you'd like it to be as you turn up. This is a good start hold. <laughs> Maybe heel hooking over. Swing feet out yeah. and then I know you backhand that and a heel come over. And or do you want to do the mantle? Yeah. John also pointed out that there's a bit of a gap here following this ramp line, which you could either have an easy version finishing it up here as outlet roof. Or you could do a hard one through the roof maybe and finish up um, hard mantle. Come on, Jim. <coughs> Jesus. My God. How have you done? Whew. That wasn't pretty, was it? A big thanks to Rockfax for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in trying out the Rockfax digital app, follow the link in the description below and use code WEDGE for a 20% discount on an annual subscription.